that's responsible for 90% of cervical cancers, 90% of anal cancers, and roughly 70% of throat cancers. About 20 million Americans between 15 and 50 have it, and it can spread even before an infected person shows signs or symptoms. Are you at risk? So we've learned so much more about this virus over the last few years. You know, it doesn't just cause warts. Um, right. You know, it, yep. it can, in some cases, lead to cancer. And most people don't think much about it. Right, and what is also scary is that you can be exposed to the HPV virus, the human papilloma virus, without actual intercourse. So it can be passed from skin to skin contact, it can be passed during oral sex, and by the age of 50, 80% of women have been exposed to this virus. So you need mm -hmm. to know about it. We don't want you to panic about it, but it needs to be on the front of our radar. And, and you say this virus, really, it's the family of viruses, mm -hmm. and, you know, some do just cause unsightly warts and things right. of that nature, but the ones that we're particularly worried about are the ones that can lead to cervical cancer, oral cancer, um, vaginal uh, cancer, vaginal vulvar, cancer. anal, yeah. and I have to just emphasize this head neck cancer. I mean, we're seeing yep. a surge in that HPV-16. Right. Is, is the type of virus, and we're seeing it in younger kids because of exactly what right. you said, mm -hmm. the oral sex part, and the fact that, that they're particularly virulent forms of head and neck cancer. Right. So nasopharyngeal cancer, base of tongue, floor of mouth, all of those areas. So and, again, and what's scary to me, Drew, as you know, is that you can't screen for oral cancer like we mm -hmm. can screen for cervical cancer. Right. So typically those cancers are detected at a relatively late stage. Yeah. The good news is, is that some of those HPV oral cancers tend to be the most responsive to treatment. And but people need to understand this is out there. This is like catching mm -hmm. a cold. But it's preventable with, with the vaccine. I, you know? I think, that's, yes. That's, what, that's great news too. I think the exposure to HPV is difficult to prevent because right. you would have you're, to be living in a plastic you're bubble. You're going to be exposed. But yes, you, you can absolutely is, is take steps Is that one of you try to, to highlight, risk. particularly to parents, oh, because yeah. you know they do think of this as a you know a vaccine for sex. Right, and, 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 and a lot of parents are resistant giving a, a, their 11-year-old daughters a, a, a vaccine against an STD. But you, you got to give it to them before they become sexually And it's also, as and you know, Jim, reality. and I, as a mother of a son, mm -hmm. I know, and you know, mm -hmm. that it is now approved and recommended yeah. by the yeah. CDC it takes for boys. Takes two to tangle, so usually, let's give it to both. But again, and, and, I think before we leave this subject, you started off with a really important point, which is it doesn't require intercourse to pass this from mm -hmm. one person Right. to the other. Right. It is ubiquitous, right. and that's why we said this is something you should be worried Wait. about. Hey, I'm Dr. Travis Stork. Press here to subscribe to the Doctor's YouTube channel, and press here to help reduce tension.